Okay, drawing 13. Very similar to drawing 9 and 10. Um, this one here, though, is offset. So from 9. 9 was on center. It was a little easier. 10 was off center, so that was a little bit difficult as well. This is even more difficult. Um, it's only difficult because there's just so many diagonals in this one, and it's offset. So it's even confusing to even just to try to lay this out, just because we got a bunch of half numbers in here as well. Nothing seems to be too uh, rounded off to whole numbers, so 107 and a half. So really going to make you look at the ruler on this one. And it's quite big, 245, so it is quite large. It's not very tall at 100. And then we got a 45 and 55 here for the two radiuses. So let's have a look to see how it's laid out. And this one's um, going to need a separate page for the pattern. So for this one here, I went up 10 millimeters here for a baseline. And I'm going to reserve this for the true length diagram. So right on center. So I did this on the center of the page. So 215 to center. 215 because these pages are 430 so I went right on center went all the way up with that and then from that center line I created uh, the front view so the 77 and a half 77 and a half so one uh, 155 and then the height is a hundred and the true length diagram is going to be a hundred and I left five millimeters in between them. Okay, so they're pretty tight there. We'll talk about this in a second. And then on the top view, I left five millimeters between them and five millimeters on the top. So it just, just fits in there on the top. Okay, for this one here, I think it's easiest if you lay out the top view first with the drawing and be uh, pay special attention just coming off center and don't get confused on these two center lines over here okay do not get confused on those so it doesn't take much to get those mixed up just because maybe the drawing is not the best drawing or there's not an extra line here you could almost use an extra line here for this quadrant for this area right here so just don't get those two lines mixed up otherwise you'll have troubles Okay, so for this one here, I've already gone ahead, um, laid out quite a bit. This is the outside of the object. And again, I drew the top first. Then I just brought these down here. So this big radius here is the top. And I just brought that down because that's the top. Then the bottom, the outside radius here and here, down to the bottom. And then this would be the flat section. So from this quadrant down, this quadrant down, and then up to the center right here. Okay, so that's the flat section. This is curved and that's curved there. Um, yeah, these are not parallel and this is not parallel either. The true length diagram, this is actually going to work for a true length here and here for the outside here. So when we go to lay this one out, what we're going to do is uh, the same as when we did 9 and 10 is we're going to connect the straights over here and the diagonals over here. The diagonals, what we're going to do is we're going to fan off from center going this way and fan off from center going that way. Meaning the up and down, up and down when we go lay out our pattern. So from the top, we'll come over and then we'll come down. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and label this. So for this one here, what we're going to do is A B, C, and D. And this is at the bottom. Okay, this is the bottom small radius, the 45. And then we're going to do E, F, G, and H. Then we're going to do 1, 2, 3, and 4. Obviously, A goes with 1 as a straight, B with 2, C with 3, D to 4, okay? This little radius comes through, don't get confused. This radius is a little bit wider than this quadrant right here at the bottom, okay? So D does come up to 4. That would be this line right here, 
there's four down to D. So this line was drawn from E to four, which would be this line. Okay, so I just didn't draw that in because it's, it's a really busy section right here. So just don't get confused over here. So four, and um, this is five here. Then we've got six and seven. Okay, so the top here, don't get confused with the bottom that's coming along here, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead, um, we'll do all the straights first. So the D4, C3, and these are all gonna be very, very close together. Okay, so let's go ahead and do these first. So D4. This one's gonna take a little bit to do. It's a big one. And like I said, these are gonna be close together. That's going to be our starting points to come up to find 4 here. Same with E4 to find that center line. C3, a little bit longer. Let's just check in the other ones. How much longer are they? This is C3. Then B2. I'm going to mark this up and down because it gets a little crowded here. And it's a little hard for you to see my writing down there, I know. The bigger your TV, the better your view. A is just a little bit longer, it's not much. <clears throat> So those are the straights, and then we'll do the diagonals. I'm going to have to make my dividers longer here for this one, for the next one's over. So I'm going to do the diagonals here first. So we're going to go D, we're going to go 3. So we're heading over, because we're going to come up and, and over. So D3, and then we'll do C2 and B1. Oh, sorry, we're going to go back and forth on that. Okay, so, D, yeah, sorry, yeah, we're going to go back, stitch this up back and forth. So D3 here still. Because we're going to come up and then we're going to go down and then we're going to go C2. These are going to be close. And then B1. Okay. So that's done for that quadrant. Now we got to do the other side. So I'll just quickly pop this off. Pop this one on. Your dividers are not going to be long enough for this other section here. Okay. So for a straight, we got E4. Let's do all our straights first. Adjusting my dividers here to kind of find the middle that's going to work. I got some adjustment here. So E4, that's a straight. That's over here. It's just going to make her on the page. Ah, we got lots of room. 
how much longer are these other ones? So if we go five, that's probably the longer the one. So all the other ones are going to be shorter. Okay, so that one was E4. And then we need to go five to F. Yeah, it's not going to take much to get confused on this one. Call that F5. Six to G, so G6. I'm going to call out the letter first. I don't think it really matters, but G6. And we don't need to do the one on the outside, just because it's over here. Just same with that one. Okay, so we're going to fan over. So we want E4, so we're going to go E5 for the diagonals. Okay, so E5. I know it's a little finicky with the dividers here. as accurately as you can and then E5 and then what we'll do is um, we're gonna go F6 which is a little longer so this is gonna be the shortest one okay so E5 and then we're gonna do F6 Hard part's going to be transferring over to the other page, so you'll probably have an easier time than I will. Just because I'm going to try to flip my page in to the camera here. It won't be too bad, but we'll get through it. G7. And I have running three dividers on this one. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at the pattern <clears throat> and then we're going to start off with D4 and E4 so we can find this top here. Okay. Okay, so for the pattern, this one we're going to come up 80. So 80 millimeters here for this baseline. And we can almost go right in the center of the page. I I went slightly to the left. So I went with um, 200 just for my center. It's going to fit. I just thought it would be a little more centered if I was just a little bit more to the left. We've got the 77 and a half and then the 155. Okay, so there's that there. You see a little ruler thing that I have down below here, that's just to double check. My 90 times pi equals 282.7 divided by 12. So I, for the 90, so for this one here, I should have 23.6 from there to there. Okay, the 55, which is the 110, times pi equals divided by 12, 28, so up top here. This is where my other two dividers are going to come in handy. So I'm going to have one set at twenty-three point six and then I'll have my other one set twenty-eight point eight. Okay. So I've already struck an arc for this one just to start. Same with over here. Okay, so let's put some letters on here. I didn't letter the center. Um, doesn't really matter which way we go. Bend up or bend down, you're going to need two. So let's just go E and D. E and D for that. And 
So we're going to be kind of back and forth on this one a little bit. So these are the two straights. So we need D4 and E4. So this one here is a little bit shorter. I might have lied here a little bit. I wonder if these ones will go big enough. D4. Okay, this one does. Hoping to get away with. So this is D4. So D. Then we're going to go E4. This is the longest one. Hopefully we don't need too much adjustment here. E4. These are able to bend as well if you have to articulate those. Oh, didn't quite go long enough. That happens. Got a real slope to it. There we go. So there's four. And we can just rub a little bit of this line out that's a little long. Okay. And this one here, the small one, no, let's not get too confused here. 23 is the small one at the bottom. Uh, and the bigger one's at the top. So did I do that correct? Nope, I got that backwards. So the bigger one here is at the top. Okay, put a line there. Put an arc there. And I have to re-arc the bottom. Just because I put the wrong arc on there. Try to get a try to get some extra work done. Without causing me more work. And it happens. I'm gonna have to adjust this one. Over here. So one of these is gonna curve down, the other one's gonna curve up. Okay, so we need to go to two, uh, D to 3. So we're heading that way. So a diagonal, D to 3. D to 3 is right here. Ooh, that's going to max out there. Just makes it D3. There's three. And we're going to have to go to E to five. Because we're heading that way, diagonal, E five. And then we're just basically going up and down from here. E5. Rub off a little extra lines there. Here's 5. And now we can go from 3 down to C. For a straight. 3 to C. 3C right here. Yeah, we're just going up and down now. We've done this before. So you get the idea how this works. There's C. E, F. So we're going 5 to F here on a straight. Just around. 
Barely caught that one. E, F. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put some arcs on here. So the small radius was at the bottom. So let's put a see the small one here. And then we'll do the bigger one for the top. Okay, now we're fanning out like I said, so we're going to go to C to 2, so that should be a diagonal. Diagonal over here, C2, coming off the top of the tree length diagram. I'm going to max out these little dividers again, C2, it's dipping down a little quicker than I thought, that's alright, just because it's heading down here. Two, and since I'm over here, um, I can go from two to B. So let's do a straight here. B two to the top of the tree length diagram. We only have the one top. Here to B. Let's come over to the other side here. Oh, why did I put five down below here? You guys are probably sitting there. Yeah, he made a mistake. Yeah, too many numbers. Okay, so uh, diagonal coming over. We're going to have to do an F4, or no, F6, sorry. Coming up that way. So F6, and then G7 will be your last one. So F6 is a big diagonal. It's over here, F6. Make sure not to get your diagonals and your straights mixed up. Everything's labeled correctly. So F6. And then 6 down to G, so that'll be a straight one. Right there. Top again, that was G6. So from 6 down to G. I guess it's not really that bad once you get going here. I guess the first part, hardest part about this is your first initial layout, I think. It's a bit of a, that's the big one, so this up here. That'll be the last one coming out. There's one. Yeah, just the layout alone at the beginning was quite a bit of drawing, so I saved myself you know, 15 minutes here getting quite a bit of that done at a time. And then it's a smaller radius for the bottom. A lot of transferring here. And then we can see this one's coming up, so... And once the pattern starts to reveal itself, you can see which way it's starting to go. Okay, so B to 1. Might as well do that one. B1. That's the diagonal. There's 1. And then we can go from... Uh, one down to A. Because we'll do that now. This is it here. This would be the true length for that. A1. There's the A. Let's go to the other side. G7. G7 is a diagonal. It's a way over here. That's a long one. Mm 
And then we just got one more straight to go here. There's the seven. Okay, seven down to H as a straight. We can take this off this side here. I was looking down below and I couldn't find it. It's because I'm going to use this one. There we go. That is a true length. This is H. All right. We're getting somewhere. Let's connect the dots and check the pattern. Okay, snake that in. Making sure your snake is nice and straight, give it a stretch. Then we'll put our bend lines on, identify everything up, and uh, this one's got a curve up, it's almost like an S. Got an S curve on this one. A little bit of a funny one. Just trying to get this here as accurate as we can here. You only want to do this one once. I'm trying to redo this curve never it never turns out as well. You get a double line going. A little bit off on my three there. Try to fair that in a little bit. There we go. Not too bad. These ones will be a little easier down here. From H to E. Sit over here. Patterns always look kind of funny when they're flat. You gotta bend them up and it gets to the right shape. The unfold button. Yeah, the, you could do this on AutoCAD as well. There is a an unfold button in a three-dimensional shape. We're not just designed to fab. AutoCAD's got a lot of different uh, sweet softwares that are available. This would be the flat area right here. And then, so there's your, your flat area, and then just these couple element bend lines on the one side. And that'll be about it. So definitely one of our bigger patterns. Uh, I know we did uh, the number 12, which is a bit of a two-parter, off-center, the big one. Okay, and then again, just going through your sheet here. Just gonna square that up, and then we'll have more one more look at the original drawing as well. I'm not gonna put. Uh, who knows if I need that center line on here or not? I probably should. Always nice to have a center line, isn't it? And then just go ahead and your name and the date. I think this is an aw brown to round. An ob to round, short form that one. And we're drawing unlucky 13. And this is a half pattern. I'll we'll have to bend one up, bend one down. Let's call these bend lines here for. 
purpose exercise. Yeah, these ones would share that one and these ones would not. Definitely looks a little funny with these ones being a little closer than the other ones. Um, let's see, this one will be a 15, these will be 30, 30, because that would be a 30 as the seam as it joins would actually create a bend. This would be a 15 as well, 30 and 30. Uh, we can put a form up too. Here we can put a form up to 110 diameter. Uh, no tabs required, so we can shear this and we can shear this. Uh, this will have to be a burn line over here and here. Same with here, it would have to be a burn line, burn line, quarter marks. Try to clean anything up that's uh, overhanging, any construction lines. Try to make it neat and tidy just around the outside here. You can darken the outside if you're using different pencils. And let's check the pattern here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Those are close together. I'm just going to wrap around, right? That looks like that. So I think we've done good. Put that up against the window, have a look. Back to this one here, we fanned out. Across the top there with our diagonals. We went this way and then we went this way. Bit of a confusion area here, it's real busy in this area. So this will be the high traffic area. If you ever get confused, you can always work from the outside in and the outside in as well. So you can end up into the center. Make it clear. You can put your name and stuff on this one as well. And that uh, finishes that one up there, drawing 13. All right, good luck.